happy DIYers and woodworkers, Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. And today I'm going to show you how to make this super simple circle cutting jig for your trim router. It works with all brands too. It's so easy. Bare minimum of tools and materials for this. And you can cut any size circle because it has a variable center point on it. Now, this is part one of a three part series because I want you to have all of the details on it. In part one, we're going to talk about the little bit of materials and hardware that you're going to need for this. And then we're going to talk about the overall dimensions of it, especially the thickness because that's super important. And then we're going to talk about drilling this hole and cutting this slot in there. It's so easy. All right, let's get going. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come over and visit me at heartwoodart.com. All right, let's get started with this. Now, the first thing you'll need to choose for this project is the size router bit you'll be using. I chose a one quarter inch straight cut bit for my project since I'm cutting circles under six inches into half inch plywood. Now, a three eighth inch straight bit would work fine for this application too. Some folks like spiral cut bits. You'll need to choose which bit will work best for your application. Next, we want to measure the thickness of the jig wood. Now, the thickness of the wood you use for your jig is based on the application and thickness of the board you'll be cutting the circle into. And here's how to measure for it. Remove the router base. And here's a good tip. Get a container to hold your mounting screws. And then put your cutting bit into the router with the shank all the way into the collar. Now here's a tip. The shank of the bed has to be inserted fully into the router collar. So the total cutting depth will be limited by the length of the bed minus at least 1 16th inch for collar clearance so that it doesn't scrape across the wood of the jig. Then lower the router as far as it can go. And then take your measurement. Lay the router on its side. Now shown here is a half inch board which is the same thickness as the plywood I'll be cutting. You can see that my quarter inch straight router bit is long enough to keep the full cutting edge down the length of the wood and still poke the tip of it through the end, which will give me a clean cut all the way through. Next, measure the end of the collar to the tip of the bit and then subtract that 1 16th inch as you'll need to back the router up that much to give the collar clearance. That measurement is the maximum of the thickness of wood you can cut plus the thickness of the wood for your jig. And as I said, I'm using a quarter inch plywood for my jig base, and I could probably cut three quarter inch plywood by using this thin board for my jig as well. Okay, next, let's measure the length of your jig. Determine the radius of the biggest circle you want to cut. Now the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to its edge. Add to that distance the width of the naked base of your router meaning without its base plate, and then give yourself an extra few inches for the outside edges of the jig. All that added together is the length of your jig. So here's an example. The biggest circle I'll likely ever cut will be 12 inches, meaning it will have a six inch radius. The naked base of my router is three inches. Six plus three equals nine. This is the minimum length of my jig. Now I'll add three inches to give myself a margin of one and a half inches on each side of the jig. Six plus three plus three equals 12. And I just happen to have a 12 inch by 12 inch plywood square for my scroll saw. So that's what I'll be using for my jig. And here's a tip. Start with a bigger piece of wood and don't cut out your jig yet. You'll need the rest of that board for clamping as you create your jig. Okay, let's cover router placement. Router bits turn clockwise. That means you need to cut counterclockwise with them. So the position of your router needs to be on the far right of your wood. The slot for the center point of your circle will be to the left. I use the lower right corner of my jig as my initial point of reference. Be sure to always place the router with the opening toward the top of your jig, away from you, as that is the front of the router. Now let's mark the jig for width. Put the base plate back on your router. Place the router base flush with the corner edge of the jig wood so that the bottom 
and one side touch the edges of the corner. Now, if you have a square base, this is easy. If a round base, check both sides and line up as carefully as you can. Then mark the top of the router base and then repeat for the other side. Then lay a speed square against the top edge of the jig and draw that line connecting the two marks. This is the width of your jig. Now it's time to mark our jig for the router bit. Either clamp your speed square or another straight edge snug to the top edge of the jig base. I hung my jig off the edge of my workbench and used another square of plywood as my straight edge and I clamped them together. Then I moved the router end to end to ensure I had clamped my straight edge squarely. Okay, now drop your router bit down until it's touching the jig base. And this may make it a little bit wobbly because it's past the base. If you want to mark your bit placement to the left, then point the router so that the front is facing you. If you want to mark your bit placement on the right, then point the router so the front is away from you. Then attach the battery. Hold the router securely and turn it on for a split second, just long enough to make a mark. This will be the center hole of your bit. Okay, now it's time to mark our slot. To ensure that your center point for your circle is dead even with your bit, you'll be cutting the slot down the length of the jig base using your trim router. So now is a good time to mark that slot. Place your router on the far left in the same spot where you just made the mark for your bit hole or on the right if you did it that way. Hold the router securely and turn it on. Then slide the router until the base is square with the end of the jig base on the opposite side or maybe just a little over the edge. Okay, now you're ready to drill the hole for your router bit. I did mine on my drill press to ensure I got the center of the drill bit into the center of the mark I made with my router bit. Drill out that hole using the same size drill bit as your router bit. And here's a tip. Use a center hole punch or nail to indent the center of that mark so that your drill bit will be centered as you make the hole. And now you're ready to cut the slot for the variable center point. You'll be cutting this with your router bit, starting with the hole you just drilled for your bit as a starting point. Now I put my jig base back into that clamp setup I had earlier. Then set your bit low enough to cut through the jig base. Line up your router base in the left corner of the jig wood with the front facing you. Hold the router firmly and cut a slot across the jig wood until your base is flush with the other corner or however long you need that slot. Take your time and let the bit do the cutting. Okay, now don't cut your jig out of the bigger piece of wood yet. You'll still need that extra board to clamp to in the next step. In part two of the series, we'll be mounting the router to the jig, and I'll show you tips for marking and making the mounting holes. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed part one of the circle cutting jig series. In part two, we're going to talk about how to make these little holes to mount this thing, because there are tips and tricks that are gonna save you from wasting out your wood on it and make this a whole lot easier for you. So be sure to look below this video for more information about where to find this whole series. And I'll see you in the shop.